we go first against The Voice. This is just a hit music show where people try and sing for judges. Mm, okay, so Elvish. Stick. Well, we have Belmore. Belmore's going to be really good, especially with Mana Form Hellkite. Casting non creature spells gives us hasty tokens in turn turn. Now they're going to get Radagas next turn. This is a wizard. So we get two hits on her. Five damage draw two. This is actually pretty crazy. Unless they have protection, then at least we still draw two. Okay, so that's probably one of the fastest games I've ever seen in my life. We go first. Okay, Dragon's Rage Channel. Always love to see this in my starting hand. And the Dreadhorde Arcanist. All we need now is actual spells. Um, but the surveil on this is going to be incredibly good with the Dreadhorde Arcanist. So we're just going to... Do we want to hold that back? We'll just go for it. Let's go for it now and then we're going to see the top card. Magda. Not that interested in ramping. We've already got creatures. We need some non-creature spells tr to uh, to trigger the Dragon's Rage Channeler, to be honest. Okay, the game's going to be... It's going to be, <laughs> be a challenge. Let's hope they don't just have board wipes. Although they have a token strategy. Maybe they don't have too many board wipes, if any at all. So we'll see. Fateful Absence, taking out the Dreadhold Arcanist, sure thing. Swing in. Okay, give us something good. One toughness. Helios is a life gain strat. Okay, expressive iteration is good. Let's go for that next turn, I think. Because then we can combine the uh, the prowess here to get a bit more damage in next turn. Holding things off can be nice. I mean, if we don't have a board wipe, then we're just screwed, I think. But we'll play one more turn if they do have a board wipe, because we have the expressive iteration. Which may help. Never know. You gotta keep... Right, Yorgmoth. Ugh. Sacrifice... A Another creature. Okay, so they don't have another creature to go off just yet. Right, let's go for the iteration and see what we get here. So Savelle is going to be nice to help. No, we need a kill spell, please. Put one of them into your hand. Okay. Um, tower into hand. And then we're going to the land into the library. So we have the kill spell for the Yorgmoth, which is good. How much mana do we have? Three, four, five. So we can't do both in the order that we want, sadly. Another land. Blimey. So when... <laughs> sometimes we get flooded and... You know, just the game is crazy. Now, if they have a board wipe, we are in a lot of trouble. A lot of trouble indeed. Down to 12. Treasure. Okay. We just have to get lucky. They haven't quit, so they probably have some kind of removal. The Heartfire Emulator can straight up just deal with the Alendus. It's unlikely that we see her come down without any form of protection or... Oh, okay. That is a bit weird. So let's draw with the clue. Come on, give us a spell, please. I mean, that ain't a spell, but. Right, I guess we just attack with these. Now, interestingly, um, if we sack this to deal two damage, the Elender goes up. So they'll get two one ones. But I still think we just we just do it here. Otherwise they could give it protection in their turn. And they have a lifelink, which kind of sucks. 
because it means that the Heliod's going to make them bigger. And they put her in the bin, so they have a blood on the snow. Oh, ECD. That's going to kill Talrand? Gore. Okay. Dive down. I think we just attack with all. See what they do. Block. Block. Sure. So we're going to dive down on this. This is a bit of a risky move here, but instant. There's already an instant in the graveyard. Down to four. Maybe it would have been better to give the Dragon's Rage Channeler um, the toughness there. Hmm, we shall see. We shall see how this pans out. They're going to get the phase three to resurrect the Alenda. Oh, no. Liliana can sack both of our creatures. No, that's that's sad. Okay, so I guess Eruth is actually pretty good, I have to say. Because we get two draws next turn to see what we get. Right, fingers crossed. So here they're going to get a zombie and they're going to bring back the Elender. Now, if they have any other removal spells, are we going to be in some trouble? Damn, I felt like we're so close. They're at five. It's not going to take too much to kill them. Just have to get really lucky. Lurus. It's going to be able to cast things from the graveyard. And a zombie. And the Selfless Spirit. Wow, not, not much then. Oh, wow, and a Heliod as well. Goodness gracious me. Lightning, two lightning bolts on top. Now this is interesting. Bilbo can't be blocked. Hmm. Can't be blocked by creatures with greater power. So... Can't be blocked by anything currently. If you would draw a card, exile top two. Wow, that's actually really cool with Bilbo. So we'll attack in. Holy crap. Um, yeah. Now the only issue is Heliod's going to be able to gain them life next turn. Lava Coil and Gandalf the Grey. Hmm... Hmm. Those are some very powerful cards that we just got. Treasure as well. Wow, is this going to be enough? So we're basically we're basically going to kill the selfless spirit with the lava coil, right? So Oh, this sucks. Because basically they now have a loop they can cast the Selfless Spirit from the graveyard every single turn. Tap on tap. Three damage to each opponent. Oh, if we just had the Firebrand Archer deal one more damage before. Copy target instant or sorcery spell you control. You may choose new targets. Maybe we just save the Lava Coil. Because they currently, because it's not going to do anything. They're just going to be able to play it from the graveyard, aren't they? It's literally not going to do anything. So let's just equip. Oh no, but it's going to go away. So we have to do it. Okay. Fine. If we copy it, it's not going to really going to matter. Let's just deal the three damage. A lender gets bigger. They get a counter, they draw a card. Down to one. Down to one. 
Jeez. See, now if we could use the Gandalf ability again. Oh, that'd be so good. I don't think we're going to be able to get out of this one. Not with Liliana. Lisa. Wait, they just... What? They just killed themselves with something. As an additional cost. One life to active. <laughs> like, they just killed themselves with a thramport. <laughs> they had that in the bag. All they had to do was probably minus the Liliana and attack in with lifelink. Oh, that was silly, wasn't it? Okay, we go first. We've got the Strike at Rich, which means turn to Bilbo. Or even turn to Bone Crusher if we wanted to be mega aggressive. I think that's a waste of resources because we won't be able to get the two damage out here. The Sir Gwyn is an equipment Mardu build. Hingeblade companion. Okay, yeah, I think we'll go for the Bilbo here. We've got more mana for the next turn. The next turn we can also go for the flavorful birthday escape. Which is somewhat ironic because the act of escaping is not represented on the card. Lorian Brooch. Non-basic land war. That's very strong. It comes attached. Create a copy of it. So we don't want that to happen, do we? I think we just attack for now. And if it gets through, we get a treasure, which is very important. And then we can go for the sword. So we're going to set up the following turn. So we've got a really good start. Dive down. Protect the Bilbo if they have a removal. Adeline. Ooh. Adeline is, is going to be annoying. And they get another attacker. Yikes. Yeah, that is that is annoying. Okay, let's swing in. Let's see if they block. Um... They can't block with greater power, but they can block with Adeline. So we'll see what they do here. Sure. So now we can... So they're not blocking. We can abrade the Adeline. Twice. Because the sword gets us something from the graveyard. Again. So we still have the protection mana open as well. Uh, put both of those in the bin, I think. Raid. Yeah, so we got pretty lucky there. Having the double removal spell. Because she would she can just take over the game by herself. As you've already probably seen in games. Power creep on that is absurd. It used to be Brimaz makes a 1-1 on attack or block, but now it's just make you would just attack with any if you attack with any creature you own, you make a 1-1 rather than Brimaz having to attack. But crazy. They missed mana? Okay, let's see if we can get through here. Do they block? The swords are just wonderful in this game because they can make your not so wonderful mithril coat when it enters attached to a legendary creature. Well, that's not a legendary creature though, is it? I think they may have misread how mithril coat works. They may regret playing that there because, yeah, that, that was a strange move. Probably they could have done something else more effective. Unless their hand was filled with four drops, of course. We go first with a very risky hand. Um, I think I want to keep this. Oh, the Chandra makes it so good. Facing prime time again. The algorithm seems to like matching us together. Prime time, I remember from another video. Where I explained what prime time meant. I'll leave it a mystery for now unless you watch my older videos. <laughs> so the braid's going to be good. We can kill the Galadriel eventually if we want to. Or maybe a mana rock or something. If we don't get... Fantastic. Okay, that's really good. Do we just want to go for... Shaman. Bilbo. We'll try going for Bilbo here. I'm 
I'm not massively bothered if they counter him because he's not at this current point in time he's not doing much but if they go for I'm not going to cast anything wowzers see if a snipe can resolve her and then we even have the dive down to protect our team nice so I want them to tap out Wowzers, creating treasures. Oh, that's just lovely. This is. I keep forgetting he can do that, but it's so good. Joint exploration. You could use wordplay for this card. What kind of joints do you like exploring? Smoky ones, clearly. Ley line. So the spells are going to have flash. Interesting, but they don't have any mana open. Okay. Let's go for Chandra. They gave us a nice window there. They have a patch of negation in hand, which is kind of annoying, but. You wanna play with fire? And then Today we can go for. Day. I think we'll go for Fiery Inscription. Seems legit. Which is basically like having two gutter snipes out. We'll keep Bilbo as a ring bearer. It's good to have low power creatures as ring bearers. Land. Land, 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 land. I want to... I wanna... No, it's fine. We'll get rid of the land just because we can make a treasure here. Yeah, so as I was saying, low power creatures better as ring bearers because they can't be blocked by things with greater power. So basically it's Skulk, but they didn't write that on the card. But now they have Flash. They can do all sorts. Let's go for top card of the deck. What we got then? Okay, we can't cast that, so it's just straight up two damage to combat so now we're facing the fact that they could have um well i think this is just a bit too expensive right now we've got the kessig flame breather to deal more damage interesting so no fifth land drop here so next turn there might not be river's rebuke which is what i'm terrified of merit lager's slumber Cool. So it's a snowy scry. That's actually a good addition for this deck because scrying means putting lands into play from the top. Love it. Love this commander. Gladriel is very cool. Anything else? And a starfish. Lovely. It's not chocolate though. It's just a regular one. And if they cast the Galadriel, I think I'm going to kill the starfish in response here. Wow, that deals five damage every spell I cast. Pretty crazy, right? Pact of Negation. Um, if they don't play a fifth land here. Interesting. I think we might have just killed them because they can't, without the fifth land, they can't. Okay, we got the, we got the land. So next turn they're doing nothing. Let's just kill the Galadriel because it means one fewer blocker in our turn. This is another five damage here. Craziness. Yeah, we got him really good. <laughs> we got him really good. And then in our turn, dive down will be another five and then attacking in. Oh, splendid. Today I'm bringing you a delightful flavor build for Bilbo Retired Burglar. So sadly, this is the only Bilbo we got in the set. We don't have a rare or mythic one. Um... But in paper there is, I think, in one of the commoner decks. But here we go. It's a one blue and red, one three. And when he enters or leaves a battlefield, the ring tempts you, or him in this case. And whenever Bilbo deals combat damage to a player, create a treasure token. So I suppose that reflects him in his plundering days when he'd go on adventures and steal treasures and artifacts. So it's a bit of a weird card because you can go in multiple directions. I thought, why don't we go in all the directions? The first, the first direction I thought we should discover together is the flavor build that tolkien would have probably wanted so let's go through some of the cards which would make him proud i think obviously we're gonna have to, the one ring because he had it before he gave it to frodo and it's just probably one of the strongest cards the game has to offer right now it is ludicrously strong the amount of cards this can draw you is just stupidly silly we have gandalf the gray flavorfully so because this is when 
before he he passed and turned into Gen of the White. This guy's pretty interesting. It's not mega powerful, but it it works really well in a spell slinger deck, and that's what I've gone for here. There's a few wizards in the deck, and there's a lot of spells. So whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, you can tap one, tap a permanent. So you could actually combine that with the one ring. So once you've tapped the ring to draw some cards, you can untap it with Gandalf to draw more. Gandalf deals three damage to each opponent. Or copy target instant or sorcery spell you control, you may choose new targets for the copy. And then once you've done all those, because you can't do them again, you'll have to eventually put them away or flicker him or bounce him somehow. But you can put them on top of its owner's library. And then the next time you recast him, you can trigger all the spells, abilities over and over again. So he's a bit slow, but you can do three or four things in one turn and just make him go off, which is pretty cool. So he definitely has to be in the deck. There and back again, which is the, the, the book that Bilbo wrote. I thought this was really beautifully kind of designed. I was thinking, oh, where's the book that he wrote? But they turn it into a saga, so it kind of makes sense. So there and back again. You can make up to one target creature not block for as long as you control there and back again, and the ring tempts you. And then you can search a library for a mountain put on the battlefield, and then you create Smaug, a 6 6 legend with flying haste. And when the creature dies, create 14 tokens. So that's really cool. Obviously, the flavor there is he's been on his journeys and he's written his book, and this is the result of, of his tales, the tales that he's telling Frodo. We also have Myth or Coat, which is what. Uh, I'm pretty sure Bilbo gifted this to Frodo, but Frodo is basically a proxy <laughs> for Bilbo. Frodo does what Bilbo does, but for longer, I think. But yeah, this is just really good. Gives something indestructible. It has flash, and it comes auto-equipped to a legend when you have it come in. And then we also have Sting, the Glinting Dagger, which, I mean, let's be honest here. These cards probably aren't going to be super effective in most matchups but i thought we we're going for the flavor build so bear with me here equipped creature gets plus one plus one haste which is which is decent uh beginning of each combat untap equipped creature so you can keep blocking over and over again and it has first strike if it's blocking or block blocked by a goblin or orc so it's pretty cool pretty cool card uh what are some of the other things we have here we have uh, another gandalf when he first visits the shire to give your spells uh, flash if they were sorceries and whenever the ring tempts you if you choose a creature other than Gandalf friend of the Shire you draw cards that's really nice we have essentially two copies of Gutter Snipe so Gutter Snipe whenever you cast a spell two damage to each opponent but Fire Inscription which is strictly better because it's harder to kill when it comes in the ring tempts you and cast an instant or sorcery deal two damage to each opponent as well this is ridiculously good so the deck operates a lot about Wizards, instants, and spells. So we have things that do things when you cast spells, right? So stuff like Balmore, which gives your whole team a pump when you cast instants or sorceries. Sprite Dragon, casting an uncreature spell, put a counter on Sprite Dragon. Uh, Flame of Arnold, this is really powerful. This is a bit like Prismari Command, uh, but you need a wizard out to do two things. But you can draw two to try and effect or deal five damage. As I said, very similar to Prismari Command. Which does two damage, draw two, discard one, or create a treasure or destroy an artifact. But obviously, this is a bit more powerful, but you have to have a wizard. So it's debatable if it's good or better or worse, but I, I really like it. The five damage is, is really relevant here. Um what else have we got? Got Kiln Fiend, which gets stronger as soon as you cast instance or sorceries, all sorts of things like this. Firebrand Archer, cast a non-creature spell, deal one damage to each opponent. Um more flavour things, the soothing of Schmiegel, returning a non- token creature to its hand to tempt you and obviously the more tempt temptation you have the more tempted you are the stronger Bilbo can get all other creatures that you designate as the ring bearer we have birthday escape which is exactly what he does in the fellowship of the ring he just decides to leave on his 111th birthday and if you make him unblockable and so on and so forth you can give him the swords as well sword of once and future king which lets you cast spells from the graveyard which is really strong or forge of frontier which lets you cast spells off the top of the deck or play lands but yeah, the synergy here is is really wonderful. It's a really, really fun deck to play. And I think you'll really enjoy revisiting Fellowship of the Ring and maybe even The Hobbit. Uh, who knows if they, give the, if they make Hobbit cards in the future? They might do. They can introduce all the dwarves and um, some other characters. But for now, we have the original trilogy. And this deck really represents the Fellowship pretty well. Sadly, you can't have any other Hobbits in, so it's a bit of a weird flavor fail in that regard but this is more of a personal journey for Bilbo and the things that directly affected him so let's see if you can get Bilbo and Gandalf out let's see if we can do it and maybe you'll spot some other flavor things in the deck that I haven't mentioned but 
The deck list will be in the description below. So yeah, I hope you enjoy playing the deck and tell me in the comments um, if you enjoy it too. Until next time, see ya. Did you know that you can help my channel by watching another one of my videos? Go ahead, you know you want to.